Well, First Rand's outgoing CEO, Sizueng Lasana, has described the group's results released today as pleasing. The financial services group that owns First National Bank reported normalized earnings of just under 10 billion rand. Interest revenue and non-interest revenue both rose in double-digit percentages on the back, increased, uh, in the back of increased growth in advances and deposits. But the finance group saw bad debts climb 26% to just over 3 billion rand. Our reporter, Nompu Saseba, caught up with Sizwing Masana this morning. She started by asking him what he feels is behind the higher earnings. Divisions did quite well. If you look at just F&B, you know, growing by 17% in a very tough environment, you know, has been really a stellar performance from, from there. Uh, mainly on the back of the continued migration of customers to electronic channels. Uh, because, you know, even though the growth in customer numbers has slowed down, uh, we continue to see customers use electronic channels increasingly and so on. So that was quite important, especially in driving non-interest revenue. Uh, but advances also or loans grew quite strongly as well at FNB, uh, particularly in the commercial space as well as the wealth area, uh, you know, did quite well there. Uh, in West Bank, you know, the business is always going to be exposed to a, the tough economic cycle that we are uh, facing at the moment. But in spite of that, you know, a growth of 8% in earnings uh, or profit before tax even at West Bank was really uh, very solid. At RMB, you know, the growth at 7% was good, especially considering the additional provisions that we created, especially because of the decline in oil and gas prices where we have some exposures that we felt we needed to be more prudent about in terms of you know, provisioning. So across the board, you know, the business did, did quite well. We continue to focus on maintaining and containing costs. Uh, we continue to drive net, net interest income. So advances grew quite strongly in the mid-teens, about 14%. Uh, and our non-interest revenue was also quite strong you know, at about 14%. So, so how is the South African consumer faring, particularly in the area of bad debt? Well, the bad debts in certain pockets are showing a trend that is increasing. For instance, in the vehicle finance space in West Bank, we've certainly seen an increase in non-performing loans as well as impairments there. They're still within our expectations. Uh, in F&B, in the commercial area, you know, there are some areas which are showing signs of increase. Uh, in bad debts as well as you know non-performing loans, uh, in RMB there are pockets, as I indicated, you know the decline in oil prices with some of the exposures, especially in countries such as Nigeria, uh, you know said to us we need to be a bit more conservative and therefore add to the provisions. With growth expectations in South Africa really looking quite poor at the moment, uh, is First Strand pushing quite hard for the rest of its Africa operations to deliver more revenues? Yeah, we continue to do that, but you must be mindful of the fact that uh, in six of the 13 countries in which we are now operating, we started those businesses about five years ago. So they're still small, and we're busy scaling them up. Uh, so in countries like Mozambique, Zambia, Tanzania, Ghana, India, you know, we still have uh, Nigeria, we still have they're pretty much small operations, so they're not really moving the needle in terms of you know diversity of earnings yet, but they are on the growth path. In South Africa, we continue to see growth opportunities in spite of the fact that the economy is in a tough spot. There are pockets that are doing quite well here in this jurisdiction. If you just look at, as I indicated, our you know consumer business in the wealth segment, in the upper income segment, you know it's doing quite well in commercial, both in the SMME space, in the small and medium space, as well as the mid-corporate space, we're doing quite well. Now, you'll be stepping down in September. In terms of your legacy, to what extent uh, do you feel that you've helped in transforming First Strand in terms of nurturing black talent? Well, we've done particularly well in that area. Uh, clearly not where we want to be, so there's still a fair amount of work that needs to be done. But you just need to look at our senior and top management positions in the group who are now you know, approaching about 40%. Uh, in F&B particularly, which is the biggest of our franchises, more than 50% of our top management, which is our exco at F&B, is black. At West Bank, it's just over 40%. So we've done very well at First Rand Corporate Center, which is the head office environment. Uh, it's about 47%. So we've done very well. And more importantly, it's not just transforming from an African colored and Indian standpoint, 
but particularly African women, which tend to be left behind in the transformation agenda. We're doing particularly well in that area. Life expectancy is very high these days, and we know that you're a relatively young man. So what can we expect you to be doing post-September, particularly in the area of education, for example? We know you have a passion there. Yes, you know, that's one of the areas that I'm going to probably have a bit more time to, to spend on. Uh, you know, I do chair the National Education Collaboration Trust, which is a partnership between business, labor, civil society, working with government to improve the quality of education in the country. We're gaining a huge amount of traction there. We are already involved in 4,362 schools, you know, that uh, cater for just over 2 million kids. Uh, we've managed to mobilize just over 1,800 different service providers uh, and people to, you know, to help you know, in the implementation of the programs which include teacher training and you know, upgrading schools and things like that. Uh, so I'll continue playing that role, but you know, um, I'm still going to be very much involved, especially in the entrepreneurial space, uh, you know, in family businesses, you know, the businesses that I want to start. Uh, in a number of opportunities that you know exist in this country as well as the rest of the continent.